The fastest carbon plated running shoes from different manufacturers have been tested in an independent study to see which ones give you the biggest performance boost. In this video I will go through the results in this study and by the end of the video I will also show you what it looks like when the fastest of these shoes hit the ground in 10 times slow motion. Back in 2017 the running shoe industry changed forever. For the first time the shoes was able to give you a significant performance boost and it was Nike with the first version of the Vaporfly that changed the game. At the time I thought all of this talk about the new type of super running shoe with a carbon plate in the midsole was just all marketing hype. But now there have been many independent studies showing that these new types of carbon plated shoes with super bouncy foam actually allow most runners to run with less effort at the same speeds compared to more traditional uh, racing shoes. Nike was for some time alone with these kinds of super shoes, but now almost all uh, running shoe brands have come out with their version of a carbon plate uh, the racing shoe to try to compete with Nike's two super shoes, the Vaporfly and the Alphafly. To find out if other manufacturers have caught up with the development, Joubert and Jones did a study to compare the performance of seven of the most popular carbon plate uh, the racing shoes. So is Nike's shoes still the fastest or have some of their competitors managed to catch up and create an even better shoe? How they do this test is that they have a group of runners in this study, there were 12 runners and the runners ran at a set speed of 3 minutes and 45 seconds per kilometer on a treadmill. And while running with the different shoes they measure how much oxygen the runners have to take in to maintain this speed. So basically if you have to take in less oxygen with one shoe compared to another then running with that shoe will cost you less energy and will also most likely mean that you should be able to maintain that speed for longer and run faster with that uh, shoe. The shoes that was included in this test was the ASICS Metaspeed Sky, Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next% Percent, New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite, Hookka Rocket X, Brooks Hyperion Elite 2, Saucony Endorphin Pro, Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. I don't know why they make all of these running shoe names so long, but yeah, those were the shoes that was uh, included. And then for comparison, they also included a more normal running shoe without carbon plate, the ASICS Hyperspeed. So let's start to go through the results of this uh, study. The results will be presented as how much less oxygen the runners uh, on average had to take in with the shoe compared to the comparison shoe, the ASICS uh, Hyperspeed. The shoe that performed the worst was the Hookka Carbon Rocket X and this shoe only gave 0.08% less energy consumption and this is way less than the margin of error in a test like this. So this shoe one could say does not perform better than a more regular type of running shoe. The second last shoe in the test was the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2 with 0.53% less energy consumption. So both of these shoes are nothing revolutionary but these two shoes were the only two shoes in the test that they did not perform significantly better than the comparison shoe. So besides these first two shoes not giving a clear performance boost, the rest of the shoes did. And this is not the only study showing the effect of these new super shoes. Before I will present the rest of the results, I thought I would share a bit about uh, my own opinion of these new types of super shoes. So my feelings towards these shoes have changed quite uh, a lot. At first I was super skeptical because one of the things I love the most about running is that it's a sport that's not all about the uh, gear. You just need a pair of running shoes and that's it. And you don't have to be rich uh, to be able to be competitive at uh, a high level. So that was why I was really skeptical when I first saw that these kinds of shoes actually gave you a performance boost. And I still think it's a bit sad that our simple sport has become a bit more focused on the gear. But what changed my mind a bit about the shoes was when I first tried running in one of these super shoes myself. Because it was not only that you could run a little bit faster in these shoes on less effort, the super bouncy cushioning in them also made it a lot less demanding, at least for my body when running at fast paces on hard surfaces. And it was also just a really fun and cool experience running with these kinds of shoes. 
and the shoes have actually allowed me to run a bit more on faster paces and I've heard from many other runners that have experienced similar things and that these kinds of shoes has also helped people to run more with less injuries. So if these type of running shoes can lead to more people enjoying running, I'm uh, all for it. What finally sold me on these uh, types of shoes was when I bought a pair as a push present for my wife. Since she is recovering from uh, twin pregnancy, her body can't handle a lot of running at the moment. But her experience with these shoes was that she could run more and faster with less pain, so that was really cool to see. I would also love to know what you think of these new super running shoes and how they are changing the sport of running. Feel free to leave a comment about your thoughts uh, down below and we can open up a good and healthy discussion there. Okay, back to the results of the study that uh, Schubert and Jones uh, did. The New Balance RC and the Saucon Endorphin Pro performed uh, quite uh, equal with 1.37% and 1.48% less energy consumption. So there were three shoes that stood out and gave a great running economy boost. And the first one was the ASICS Metaspeed Sky with 2.52% less energy consumption on average. As you can see the two shoes that are left are the two Nike shoes. So it looks like Nike still is the king of these super shoes. But it's really good that other brands are catching up giving some healthy competition. Since all of these shoes have a carbon plate inside of the midsole and are quite equal in weight. That makes me think that what's still a bit better with the, the Nike shoes is the midsole material that are super bouncy and for sure give a lot of energy return. This I will also later demonstrate with a super slow motion video of the shoe that performed the best in this study. Before announcing what shoe that was, I want to thank Joubert and Jones for making this really interesting study. I will leave a link in the description to this uh, study if you want to read the, the whole paper yourself. With that said, the shoe that performed the best in this study was the Nike Alphafly that on average gave 3.03% less uh, oxygen consumption closely followed by the vapor flies at 2.72%. Quite soon the Alpha Fly 2 will be released so it will be really interesting to see if the fastest shoe can become even faster. Before we look at the footage of how these super shoes looks when hitting the ground in 10 times uh, super slow motion I want to say that even though these shoes can help you perform a little bit better you for sure don't need need an expensive pair of running shoes to enjoy the great sport of running. For example, I have ran a lot of my sessions over the last year with these, the Nike Renew Run, and this cost me only $40 and have still given me a lot of enjoyment with running and a lot of good training sessions. So let's see what these shoes looks like when hitting the ground in 10 times slow motion. While we're watching how the Zoom X Foam gives such great energy return, if you like this video, I would appreciate it a lot if you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you want to watch another video from me, you can click here or here. Thanks for watching, train smart, have fun, and I will see you in the next video.